Thank you for joining. So we are going to be talking a bit about our tech to market programs today. So just to start off, uh, we'll do some intros and then we'll go into three of our grant programs. So I'll start, I'm Madison Zeliff, Maddie. I'm a program coordinator on our MassEC's technology to market program, which is the team that primarily works on three uh, grant opportunities for startups and academic researchers. And I will pass it over to Leslie. Hi, everyone. My name is Leslie Nash. I also work on the technology to market programs that Maddie alluded to. And I will specifically speak later in the presentation about our Amplify Mass program. And finally, I think it's me. So hi, everyone. This is uh, Priya Yadav, and I am a vice president of investments at Mass Ventures. And uh, we administer uh, Catalyst for Mass EEC, and that's going to be the focus of my presentation. All right, thank you. So I'll just do a quick overview of Mass EEC in case you aren't familiar with us. So we are a quasi-government quasi agency whose mission is to accelerate the clean energy and climate solution innovation that is critical to meeting the state's climate goals, advancing the state's position as an international climate leader while growing the state's clean energy economy. So we kind of approach this mission in our work in three ways. So the first is innovation and supporting innovation to develop new solutions to unmet challenges and reduce cost and increase performance of existing solutions. So that's kind of where the grant programs come in that we'll talk about today. We also have a workforce development team that ensures we have a diverse and equitable workforce that's trained and ready to take part in the growing clean energy industry as it grows throughout the next years and decades. Definitely very important. And then market development. So we de-risk commercially ready technologies, paving the way for broad adoption, filling gaps unmet by the private sector. So that's kind of who we are at a very high level. So these are just kind of some stats, I won't go through them all, that kind of shows what our funding has done for the past, since 2010, well, so 13 years. So we've awarded over 442 million and attracted over 2.5 billion in private and federal capital, has been really excited. Um, we've had 44,000 direct jobs added since 2010, which has been really great, a um, lot of, Growth state production in 2021, we contributed 14.2 billion to that. And then our clean energy workforce, we have trained a lot of college and vocational interns over 5,000 and have had a lot of internship opportunities turn into employer opportunities full time. Yeah, these are our stats, which are exciting. Okay, so here's just some of our funding opportunities. We're not gonna be talking about all of these today, but there are a few that we're going to touch on. Um, we're always welcome if you ever wanted to reach out to us to talk about any of the other funding opportunities. But today we'll specifically be focusing on this small green Catalyst and Dices box, and then the larger like green Amplify Mass box. And it kind of just shows the TRL scale that they fall. So Mass CEC has four focus areas, net zero grid, high performance buildings, clean transportation, and offshore wind. But we also oftentimes fund technologies in a other category. So basically anything that doesn't fit into one of these four categories that has significant decarbonization. So within Mass CEC, we do have teams for all of these four focus areas, but the grant programs we're going to talk about today are unique in that we will fund any of these focus areas and kind of go outside of the traditional four focus areas. And I'll pass it to Priya really quick to talk a little bit about Mass Ventures. Great. Um, so just, just so that everybody uh, knows, Mass Ventures is the Commonwealth's uh, strategic venture capital team. Uh, we've been very successful in fueling innovation uh, in Massachusetts for 45 years now. So we fund, uh, we, fi we find first of all, then fund and foster early stage deep tech startups, uh, which fuel the economic growth across the Commonwealth. Uh, and we also try to be intentional in supporting founders across the state. Uh, we offer venture investments, business guidance, grants, and also an extensive network of partners who can help you grow your business. And here are some of the areas. So for capital, as I mentioned, we have a deep tech venture fund. You can always reach out to us 
including clean tech investments uh, that we have been funding uh, for the last uh, so many years. We also offer a RLF loan program, uh, which is a revenue-based financing loan program for early stage tech companies. Um, we also have matching um, SBIR uh, matching grant programs. So if you have a phase two SBIR, you can apply for start and through three stages, you could win up to 800,000 in non derivative funding. Um, and uh, also we offer a small uh, innovation grant program called ACORN uh, for PIs at academic research institutions. So lots of ways to help you at different stages of your startup. Um, and of course, uh, from a technology acceleration standpoint, we offer partnership programs um, where you can get access to free and discounted services, uh, legal uh, and finance among others. Um, and yeah, and so we also run uh, several events and support Mass CEC uh, uh, through uh, post-grant management for Innovate Mass, which is another Mass CEC program you will hear about later today. So just lots of support end-to-end. Uh, -end. Next slide, okay. Martin. And so just as you see here, just to summarize, our platform is an end-to-end -end support system for you, pre-investment to exit in the form of mentoring, business guidance, grants, investments, and follow-on funding. And yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about our catalyst and diversity in clean tech early stage, which I will now refer to as NICES. I think it's very long and we love acronyms. So we'll get into that a little bit. So this one is on our really low, small green box that's highlighted in red right here is our Catalyst and Dices grant. So Catalyst and Dices um, is to enable researchers and young companies to develop prototypes. So it's a prototype grant for TRLs two to four, so still pretty early on for companies that have four or less full-time employees. So we offer grants up to $75,000 for clean tech prototype development and also offer technical and business support from Mass EC and Mass Ventures as well. So we have this two times a year in the spring and fall. We currently have a round open with applications due October 27th. So if you are interested in applying, then you still have a month until it closes, but if not, we'll open it back up in the spring. Um, so this is for Massachusetts-based startups and Massachusetts-based researchers. And then DICES has the same eligibility, but it is um, for Massachusetts-based eligible women and minority-owned startups. So same requirements, but has this other factor to it. So it's a competitive two-step application review process. So you would submit a written application that we have a template for, and then we pick the top folks um, based on the scores of the written application to attend a pitch day where we then have a pitch with external reviewers and we then decide who's getting grants based off of the pitch day scores and the written scores. Um, we also offer pitch coaching for this, which have been really helpful for some young companies to kind of fine tune a pitch deck and also just have practice um, pitching their technology to a group of judges. And then we would award projects and offer business and technical support as you complete the project. So as I alluded to, DICES have to be um, more women or minority owned businesses. So to kind of show that you would be eligible for that, we ask that you follow a link to a 30 second self-assessment as part of the certification program for the Supplier Diversity Office of Massachusetts. Uh, it's a really quick little survey and then it will kind of pop out a result saying if you would be eligible or not. And then you would submit a screenshot and download of the results page as part of your application. That would look like this. And it kind of says like what you should apply for, what type of certification, and that's what we look at. And then if you are selected as a DICES grantee, it's not required but encouraged to complete the full SEO certification process. So it's just some benefits to this program, you access a vast network of partners. You really do get to know the ecosystem. We're always happy to make introductions. If there's anyone that we know that you would like to get to know, we always facilitate intros. You get expert local market and policy insights. So we have a lot of external reviewers who will give feedback if they have any that basically they, we get a really broad range of reviewers to come help. 
You also get mentoring from MathCC and Math Ventures, and we kind of try to help you be successful in the project and also like to keep in touch after the project, which is always great. And as I said, you receive complimentary pitch coaching and business mentoring. So some application requirements. Um, you have to have an overview of the technology and merit, clean energy impact, commercialization potential and proposed business model, project plan basically so showing what, when, where, and like how much the project's gonna look like, um, a budget summary and information on the team members. So that would that be included in the written application. So what do we mean by prototype? So we have the definition here on dictionary.com. It's a first typical or preliminary model of something, especially a machine from which we other forms are developed or copied, but it's not basic research. We're looking for a little bit past that. So early stage technology design development and validation. Um, maybe you want to be testing a concept and use it to evaluate design. And you're creating a thing, not an idea. So it's kind of past the idea phase and you will have a real working system and product and you'll generate data to show the invention works. So what we're looking for, strength of the project. So technical merit, commercialization potential with a large market and growing market, a strong project plan with an achievable timeline and budget, and then meaningful product development progress that would be made during the project, a strong team, clear understanding on the next steps needed and high likelihood of success. And then programmatically, we definitely look at clean energy impacts pretty critically. Um, potential for follow-on funding is always great to see if you're a university project, likelihood of market entry, and then likelihood of attracting private in investment for startups. So this is just our timeline and logistics. So we're at the webinar right now. Next step would be um, applications due by midnight on October 27th or 11.59 on October 27th. And then in December, we notify finalists of the status and if they're going to pitch coaching and then we kind of start that process and then we will have a pitch day the week of January 8th and then with decisions made February 24th that's no, February 2024 and that is Catalyst and Dices Okay, thanks, Maddie. I'll um, speak uh, a little bit to a different program that is called Amplify Math, given um, it's it's similar in applicant type and somewhat in stage of technology development. Um, so I figured it would be a good pairing with the Catalyst and Dices program. So Maddie, if you could click next slide. Thank you. Uh, so here's that same graphical image that Maddie showed before. Now we're talking about Amplify Mass, which is not focused specific on a technology readiness level uh, like Catalyst and Dices are, but rather has a different sort of niche offering, which I'll speak to in a moment, but it really encompasses a wide range of TRLs. So Amplify Mass's goal is to support Massachusetts-based startups and academic researchers on federal and non-federal awards via cost share or adder funding. So really what that means is we will provide cost share or adder grants on another award for up to three, for our, and our grants will be up to $300,000. Um, so basically, if you are pursuing, for example, Department of Energy or National Science Foundation or some other type of larger funder, if you're pursuing a grant opportunity through them, they often will require you have some cost share to contribute to the project. Otherwise, you might not be eligible to receive that funding. And so that's where we could come in if you are speaking to climate energy issues, if you're in Massachusetts then you can apply to our Amplify Mass program where we might be able to provide some or all of that cost share, depending on how much it is. We also have adder funding, which is additional funding. So for example, if you're applying for DOE and DOE is only funding X, Y, Z, but you have this idea that if you could really add ABC to that project, it would be really beneficial for you and your commercialization pathway. So um, if you have an additional scope that you really want and you think is valuable, you could also apply to us to maybe just cover that portion that DOE is not covering. 
So the way the program works in practice is applications are accepted on a rolling basis, meaning you can apply any day at any time throughout the year and we will review you as soon as you apply. Um, applications need to be submitted to MassCEC before you contract with that other primary funding entity. And as I already said, you do need to be based in Massachusetts, whether you're a startup uh, based in Massachusetts or you're um, a principal investigator at a Massachusetts-based academic institution. So again, this is TRL 2 to 8, so it's a wide range intentionally because the nature and the goal of this program is really to help leverage those external dollars to, to bring them to you here in the state. It's also a competitive two-step application process similar to what Maddie described, but um, the way this one works is you submit a written application to our email address. We'll respond saying we have it, we will start reviewing it, and then it will go to an internal Mass EC organized committee for the second stage of review rather than sending it out for external reviewers. So it's a little bit of a faster process and there is no pitch day. Um, it, it Rather than doing a pitch day, it's, it's sort of a, a committee instead. Then we'll award projects and contract and we tend to sort of piggyback and parallel the prime funding scope as well. So I won't read these. Um, they're very similar to what Maddie described for Catalyst and Dices. I think some of the key differences and what we're looking for under Amplify Mass is the value of our support, that we're filling a meaningful gap in funding, uh, particularly if you're seeking what we call the adder funding, so additional scope on top of what somebody else is already funding rather than cost share. Uh, we really want to make sure that we're uh, filling a void in your funding and that it's impactful. You know, our, our resources are limited and we really want to make sure that our funding is going um, to those who really do need it to help attain those larger grants and those larger projects. So I think that's one difference of this program versus Catalyst and Dices, given that we're typically a minority funder in this situation. Another thing here is um, we typically do want to see um, a, a really strong path to market. We're, we're seeing a really wide range of TRL in this program. So that sort of market entry or that, that closeness to market entry really varies in this program, but it is still something that we're looking at even for some of the earliest stage applications. Next slide, please. Great, so here are a couple of recently awarded projects. We always put this up just to kind of give folks a sense of things that we've seen through the program. I won't read these in too much detail, but even just by the titles, you can see that we have a wide range of eligible applicant types. We have research institutions, we have universities, we have startup companies. So a wide range of types of initiatives and projects that we'll consider. And that's that. So we will um, pause for questions and if you have questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A box, and we'll try to open as many of those as we can. You should be able to type them in if you have any questions. Well, while people are maybe thinking a little bit, um, I think Maddie said this at the top of the call, but just in case anyone joins late, we will be posting the recording and the slides on our website. Um, and you can see that on both our Amplify Math pages and our Catalysts and Dices web pages. So if you missed anything or have anyone you want to circulate this to, you can check that out there. And I think we have a question, so I'm going to allow Daniel to talk. <laughs> All right, Daniel, I think you're muted. All right, now you're not. Oh, hi there. Um, sorry, it, it looked like the chat was disabled, but um, I just noticed that there's a Q&A box that I was just about to type my question in there. So I wasn't sure if other people had uh, run into the same uh, problem that I did with the chat being disabled. Um, that's good to know. Thank you. We'll we'll use the Q and A box. Everyone seems like that's okay. working. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, I think it yeah. Is. Thank you. And, yeah. And I, I guess I, I guess now that I'm I'm on speaker here, I can ask the question in person. Um, I was wondering if the 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 seventy five thousand dollar award for the Catalyst program 
if uh, that can be used for um, not only just funding for prototype development, but also for um, legal fees for patent attorneys, if I'm gonna be submitting um, my patents in the coming months. I'll let Priya answer this. Um, she is the Catalyst and Dices expert, so go ahead. Yeah, so uh, Daniel, I would ask you to just check the RFP. In the okay. RFP, we have uh, very clearly articulated the requirements uh, for the funding. So what will and will not be covered under the funding. So just, just double check. And if you have any questions after you review, then do send us email at uh, companycatalyst at masscc.com and we'd be happy to answer. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll also put our um, email in the chat. Do you see some other Q&A? So um, someone asked if awarded, is there continuity or sustainability of funding in subsequent years? So for Amplify Mass, actually for both, um, you it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You submit one application, you receive one grant. Um, for Amplify Mass, given the nature of kind of the cost share mechanism, oftentimes what we have seen is folks apply to us saying, hi, I would like to seek $300,000 in cost share. But my prime award from, say, DOE is a three-year project. So you might only be asking one time for 300K from us, and we would only review that one time and go through contracting with you one time. But the actual term of our agreement and the scope of work might span more than one year. Um, but it is 300K per application slash grant um, at one time. It's not like you could get at 300K for year one, and then automatically roll into 300K for year two, and then year three. That's one sort of path. Another one is we off, we are aware that there are phase ones and phase twos of all different kinds of programs in, in both the federal and non-federal world. So sometimes and we have considered and seen applications for, say, a phase one for maybe less dollar amount, because those are usually smaller. And then someone successfully completes that project and comes back to us with a new application for a phase two that we would review like from the beginning. So we do consider them kind of unique submittals, but we will consider kind of both of those types of scenarios. Catalyst is totally different. I think this question was probably more towards Amplify. Um, Catalyst, it's just a 75K prototype grant for basically like one year's worth of work. And so that's not sort of the same renewal multi-year type uh, option that you would have under Amplify Mass. I think we have some others as well. Um, so someone asks for Amplify, when should we apply relative to the deadlines and notifications of the federal or other grant agencies? Um, for example, if we're applying for a federal DOE grant, should we submit to Amplify around the same time we submit the DOE proposal or wait until after we've been notified? Um, so this one, you can apply anytime throughout the application process for the say, DOE grant. We just ask that you apply to Amplify before you contract with the other agency. So we oftentimes see people apply around the same time as they apply to the other grant, just because it might be easier to write two applications at the same time if there's a lot of the same information. But we also, you also could wait until you're notified of award if you would prefer to. It's really up to you as long as you apply before you are contracted with them. Yeah, and the only thing I would add is, is you know, consider our review timeline as well. Yeah. Um, we post this on our website, so feel free to check it out. We have like an RFP and some guidelines there, but it, our review process can take up to six months. It, that's sort of the, the longest maximum it would be, but it can. So, uh, you know, don't wait too long if you know that you're going to need the, the, the decision from us sooner than that. Yes. And then Daniel had another question. Um, is it advised to apply to both Catalyst or DACES and Amplify Mass at the same time? So you can apply at the same time, but we will only have one open grant at a time for one company. It's just not the easy policy. So you wouldn't be able to have both grants at the same time, but if you wanted to apply to both and see how, how they pan out, you definitely could. Alternatively, you could apply for one. And like if you applied to Catalyst and DICES and finish it within a year, that 
you can still apply for Amplify again later. You can have multiple grants, but just at different times. But it's kind of up to you if you think administratively you can apply to both and be able to handle that, but up to you. There's a specific question in there, I think, to the legal parameters. So we, um, under the legal and other expenses of business formation and operation under inappropriate. Yeah, so so we typically want to see the majority of the 75K going to sort of actual technology development. Um, when you're proposing, you can kind of propose what makes sense. And then if you're awarded, just be prepared. We may sort of do a little bit of negotiation with you about the use of those funds and Priya could speak to that more, but sometimes if there's a really large dollar amount for a, a patent or travel, you know, we could certainly consider on a case by case basis, but usually we're, we're going to drive you towards sort of more project related costs. Um, it's just the, the intention of the small dollar amount grant. Um, but Priya, if you have anything to add since you really are in the weeds on the contracts for this one. <clears throat> no, I think what you said is right. So try and spend most of your money towards your project uh, because legal fees, as you know, right, could balloon and, and the intent of the grant is not for that necessarily, right? So do, you know, if, if there are exceptions of some sort, do reach out and ask us when we, uh, you know, if you're selected, um, then we would go through a contract with you. You would outline your so your statement of work. We would review that. So we can definitely take a look if there's something that you feel is strongly about. But for the most part, we expect this to advance your technology towards commercialization. And that's where the money should go. All right. And then we have another question. Is the grant open to those outside of the U.S.? Um, unfortunately not. So most of our grant programs, you need to be Massachusetts based. We do have a program we didn't talk about today called Innovate Mass, where you can be anywhere in the U.S. with a, a project demo site in Massachusetts. So that those are, that's the answer for that one. And I also um, put the chat, I don't know if you can see the chat and it's not typing it, but if you are able to see the webinar chat, I did put links to the programs we talked about today in there. You could also just Google like Math to EC Catalyst and it will it will come right up. All right, any other questions? You can also find contact information on all of our websites for each program specifically. So if you do ever have any questions, reach out, we're pretty responsive and we're always willing to chat. All right. Well, thanks for joining everyone. Oh, wait. Someone just submitted a question. <laughs> Yay. Um, How many applicants were there in the very recent round of DICEs? 33. I think oh just dices yeah dices were around fifteen or sixteen yeah but but a good number of applicants for both programs yep and then yeah and we keep referring to the RFP which I hope now folks can find but um, we do state this in the RFP but just for everyone here there is no penalty to applying to dices over catalyst or reverse um, we do say that we will give at least X number of DICE's grants. So we have the ability to, of course, move folks between Catalyst and DICE's. We would never penalize someone for applying to, to DICE's and not to Catalyst. So uh, in case that's the motivation behind that question of, you know, what's the pool look like and how is it less or more competitive? It's um, it, we, we do consider the program as a whole and just say the at least part. And then we have another question about, um, we reserve the right to accept or reject any or all applications and can accommodations be made for companies and technologies that are of TRL, TRL one to two. So we really do look for like a TRL two at least, usually TRL one is a little bit too early, but if you're at a TRL one to two, it seems like you would be pretty close to two. So I would just wait until you're at that point to apply. And then we will be 
So we're recording this webinar and we will be sharing it. Um, we can, we'll post it on our websites and also we can email it as well. Okay, and I'll give it another minute in case any other questions pop up. Um, so to the, how many dices are given per round? So like I said, it's at least three per round. So there's two rounds a year, so at least three per round. And then we say at least seven uh, catalyst or up to seven catalyst might be actually the phrasing. Make sure I don't mess those phrases up. <laughs> Any other questions? And Amplify is rolling. So you can email our team anytime and ask questions. Um, again, as Maddie said, the contact information for that particular program is on the website. Catalyst and Dices is an open solicitation. So we do accept questions via this format right now or via email to company catalyst at mattcc.com anytime during the open questions period, which I think ends in about a week or so. Um, and then the proposals are due at the end of the month. So if you have other questions that you think of after this, or once you dig into the written materials more, you can feel free to reach out. Um, and one other thing about Catalyst and Dice is, is we have an online application portal for that, which is great. So you can create an account, log in and just check out the application at any time. You can even start filling it out and hit save and kind of save your work. And um, that's always advised, especially if you're, you know, you're not, you're waiting to under the wire and then all of a sudden you can't use your browser and, you know, you're panicking. We all know that feeling. So definitely go in and check out the portal in advance and, and see what the proposal looks like and, and what kind of information you'll need to write. And I'll just add that if you have multiple collaborators, both of you can work on the proposal as well. So that's something that's pretty useful as well. So that, uh, you know, it, it gets things moving faster as well. And there's a question in there, Priya, that you could probably speak to about payment tranches. Uh, yeah, so we do not do it as a lump sum. We do it in three tranches. The first uh, 30,000, we give that uh, 35, I think it's now 35, right? Because of 75. So we do that first 35 uh, right after we get the contract signed. So your so statement of work has to be approved. And then we send the contract for signature. As soon as that's done, the first tranche gets paid. Then uh, somewhere midway between the project, which should last a year, uh, we ask you to submit a midterm report. Once we get the midterm report, we review it, approve it, and then give you the second tranche, which is about 25,000. And then we leave the final tranche of 15,000 at the very end, uh, where you know once you're done with the project, you submit your final report and we review it, after, you know, we approve it obviously. And then we can you can submit your final um, final pay invoice. So essentially, you get through mid at least through midway through the project, you get paid, you know, most of the grant money, and just the last fifteen thousand is reserved for your final report. All right. Last minute questions. Oh, oh, oh just thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Thank you.